Now here we are some 80 years later, now in the 2000s, 2010 and 2011 at the moment. So Ken Ono in 2000 managed to take some of these Marvin Nugent's results and discovered that there are in fact other results like this. He managed to prove that for every prime that actually there's some starting place such that every multiple of prime from that place is divisible by that prime except for the primes 2 and 3. So it was 2000. So there are other divisibility results hidden in the structure of the sequence of the partition numbers. And then 2004, he went a little bit further. In fact, he said he managed to play, prove that there is always going to be some starting point, such that there's always going to be some multiple of k, where k is a number, which I'll tell you in a moment, that's divisible by k. k could be prime, as we just showed, except for two or three. But in fact, k could be any odd number that's not a multiple of three. So it's beyond just the primes, it's more than that. Numbers like uh, something that's not prime, not multiple three. Uh, 27, there we go. Uh, so these sorts of relations exist for all sorts of numbers. Crazy. But then, in 2011, he and his collaborators managed to prove, based on this work they got from this point, they found structure within the sequence of the partition numbers. They found what's called self-similarity. Now in the next section of the video, the final section of the video, I need to explain what I mean by self-similarity in a sequence. Unfortunately, I can't really describe it fully, the result. It's very, very complicated. I'm going to give you a sense of the result, just like I said in the video. That's the next section. Okay, the final stretch of this video series. Here is the sequence of partition numbers. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 15, 22, and so on. What Ken Ono and his collaborators have discovered that there is rich structure in the sequence that's so rich, so, so uh, profound, that he actually indeed write a formula, an explicit formula, for the nth partition number. Now the math involved is very difficult. They're still working out the details right now at the time of this video. I'm uh, just getting the details done for publication. But I can give you a sense of what that means. How, what does self-similar structure mean in a sequence of numbers? Now, here goes. My favorite example of this would be with paper folding. So here's a strip of paper. If I take the left end and fold it over and make a crease in the middle, I get, lo and behold, a crease in the middle. In fact, I get a valley crease. So let me denote a valley crease simply as a one. Now, if I take the piece of paper and fold it t two times, again from left to right, and I unfold it after making three creases, it turns out, you see I have a mountain valley valley. I'll denote the mountain as zero. Zero, one, one. And if I did three folds, one, two, and here's my third fold, and I'm getting more creases in my piece of paper. Okay, good creasing going on. Unfold it, and what have I? I have, oh gosh, I have mountain, mountain, valley, valley, mountain, valley, valley. So what's that? Mountain, mountain, valley, valley, mountain, valley, valley, mountain, valley, valley, mountain, valley, valley, and so on. I can keep doing this. If I did four folds, I get another set of, set of uh, uh, creases, which gives me another sequence to add on my table. But there's some interesting structure going on here. Let me just take this third example. Look at the right half of this sequence. It happens to be identical to the first half. And the right half of this sequence, well, lo and behold, not very exciting, is identical to the first, the right half is identical to the very first sequence. But I claim if I was to do the next sequence of folds, I will have this sequence appearing at the right. I'll have a one in the middle. I guess the one in the middle makes sense. That one in the middle is always going to be that very initial valley fold. So one in the middle makes sense, but I claim that the right half is going to be this sequence, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, the previous answer. And that actually makes sense if you think about it, that once I've done a fold, so there's my first fold, I'm now left with the task of folding the piece of paper yet again. So if I'm about to do, uh, do four folds, I start with one fold, and then I'm left with the task of completing three folds. Here's the answer to three folds. So that means this half, this top half, is the same answer as having done three folds on it. But what's interesting, look at the bottom half. It's exactly the same set of folds, except it's upside down reverse. This valley here is sitting with a mountain here. This valley is with a mountain. This mountain's with a valley. This valley, mountain's with a valley. In fact, there's sim more simply going on that this uh, mountain goes with this valley. This valley 
it goes with that mountain. This valley goes with this mountain. So I know that the left hand side is actually going to be the reverse of this with the zeros and ones switched. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. And lo and behold, I can keep doing this. I have found a way to generate these folding patterns in a sequence. And in fact, one thing is a little backwards here. It's now clear that if I read things from right to left, I should be doing this in a mirror or something, that I've got one, 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 zero, one, one, zero, and then the rest of the sequence. Then the entire sequence again, and the rest of the sequence. Always again with a one followed by its mirror image. So that actually means I have a well-defined infinite sequence of zeros and ones. And then da da da, and it goes on forever. And this sequence of zeros and ones, which I've written in a very strange way, actually has self similar structure. And if you'd like, I bet as a good challenge, it's totally doable, you could tell me what the hundredth digit in the sequence is going to be without having to calculate the first 99 of them. There is a way to get a formula for whether the nth one is a zero or one. That's within reach, it's totally doable, it's a fun challenge to work on. But it illustrates my point. Here is a sequence of numbers that has self-similar structure. Parts of it are reflections of itself. Now what Ken Ono and his collaborators discovered that actually there's the same sort of similar structure going on in the sequence of partition numbers. Now I've got to be careful, things are more complicated, this is why I have to say it's very difficult math, because in number theory you measure difference, differences, distances in a different way. So rather than have sequences that have um, sequences in numbers in sequences that are close to each other in the sequence literally, what they discovered is that self-similarity happens on the p-adic level. That means two numbers in the sequence are going to be considered close to each other if they differ by a number that's a very high power of a prime. That's why their prime results actually are relevant to the study. So actually there is this sort of folding going on, this self-similarity going on in the sequence. They could actually write a formula for it, for what the nth one's going to be based on this p-adic analysis. That is, these powers of primes going on within the sequence of, of, of uh, partition numbers. It is astounding. This is an age-old problem that's now been solved. It's wonderful. This is the joy of mathematics. There's always more mathematics to be discovered, solved, and pursued. It's an unending human endeavor. It's fabulous.